Hello, story listeners. Pat, storyteller here. This time with a true scary Halloween story. Listen if you dare. If it weren't for coincidence, you might not hear what you are about to. This story begins one late rush hour afternoon a few days before Halloween on one of many travels around the city. Waiting at a bus stop, I let a number of crowded buses pass by before giving up on the idea that there would be one vacant seat for a tired body. After three or four buses passed by, I finally boarded one. Straight away, the bus driver, a lanky gentleman with a calm, restrained voice, greeted me by my name. Oddly, he even seemed to know where I lived. Then, just before driving off, he handed me a sheaf of papers. As the bus lurched forward, he urged me to look at the package of photocopied newspaper articles. It included an article I had written on the difficult economic conditions immigrants to Canada face. The package was a meticulously organized set of documentation that may serve as clues or answers to what is happening in this postmodern world if you use mysticism and the book of revelations as a reference point. Well, I don't lay much store in much of this, but again, the power of coincidence suggested that this bus driver who introduced himself as Richard, had to have his due. Besides, the questions are being raised in churches, in bars, and points in between about the meaning behind all the recent natural disasters, devastating earthquakes, and record number of Category 5 Hurricanes. The articles, many which appeared in the Toronto Star, revealed that technology exists to create some scarier than Halloween developments, including biometric technology. His notes pointed to Revelations 13, 16, a reference to, quote, the mark of the beast, unquote. And as I scanned a March 14, 2005 Toronto Star article on U.S. supermarkets using fingerprint scanning to pay for purchases, Richard proffered that the technology exists to create weather disasters. It was his explanation for the recent spate of killer hurricanes. His file contained a March 2005 article from the subway paper Metro on, quote, Africa's bloody war for cell phones, unquote, about how, quote, the growing demand for cell phones and other high-tech devices, unquote, meant industrialized countries exploited the war in Congo that killed 4.7 million. Congo has a wealth of coltan, the ore from which tantalum, which is, quote, a high, a rare, highly conductive and heat resistant metal used, unquote, used in electronic components is derived. Richard's file contained information on genetically modified foods. 
He cautioned against fruits and vegetables that contain no seeds. Richard noted that rich countries are trying to avoid GM foods, but poor countries are advancing their use. There was information in Richard's folder showing that in 2004, Canadians spent more than $18 billion on prescription drugs. A star feature reporter wrote in a September 2, 2005 article that, quote, said pushing pills down our throat, quote, that most Canadian adults are likely taking some prescription drug, whether it's to lower le bad cholesterol or for depression or high blood pressure and so on. Then Richard's file got even more interesting. Next came an article that ran in the January 21 to 23, 2005 Subway Paper 24 Hours. The article was on U.S. President George W. Bush's inauguration in which Bush is photographed making a hand gesture that Richard labeled quote, black magic devil's horn, unquote. He also extrapolated on the significance of certain numbers mentioned in the article, including, quote, 39 tradition hallowed words that every president since George Washington has uttered, unquote. And the U.S. nation's 55th inauguration. His file wrapped up with articles about preparations for the flu pandemic, which he stressed officials say will occur. A Toronto Star article dated August 26, 2005, has the headline, quote, GTA gets ready for the flu pandemic, unquote, and notes that a 2004 pandemic report from Health Canada estimated that, quote, up to one third of the population would fall ill and more than 50,000 could die as a result of a pandemic, unquote. And a star article from October 5, 2005 says the U.S. military would be called in to maintain quarantines to control the spread of the avian flu pandemic. Finally, back to those biometrics and other tracking devices. Richard has this information that Canada's Citizenship and Immigration Department is planning a $6.5 million trial project to digitize photos and fingerprints of new immigrants. The idea is that it will, quote, reduce costs and increase productivity. Well, it is difficult to make sense of our times. Some will frame the facts of the day using the book of Revelations in the New Testament as their reference point, and certainly Richard did. As I got off that bus finally, and it headed east into the darkening evening, I felt an otherworldly sensation, disoriented by the coincidence of choosing that bus over any of the others, but sure that because of it, Richard's insights had to be shared. Of course, this kind of coincidence could only have happened in the season of Halloween. <laughs>